Hey all, Hipper here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Sea of Conquest. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, lots of Sea of Conquest content coming. So in this video here, I just wanted to give you a few tips if you're starting out in the game and you have just begun in Season 1. Now uh, I'm in Season 3 at the moment, so uh, I've been looking back and thinking, okay, what are the things I wish someone would have told me when I started in Season 1, like what I should focus on. And uh, the stuff that I should, uh, you know, just be aware of back at, in the day, really. And uh, the first thing you should do when you're starting out in Season 1 is to just play the story. Uh, you know, do the main plot, do the tasks that the game gives you. Uh, because one, it's really necessary. You need to get some uh, artifacts first. And two, you will learn quite a few things when you do that. So, uh, like I said, uh, follow the story. Do the main quest uh, until it stops you, like it stops... A few times every season and you have to wait so uh, do that first and uh, then after that you can start doing all the other stuff in this video first I just want to warn you though this is a free to play game but uh, you will have to spend some money if you want to be competitive now it doesn't have to be a lot but uh, one thing that I always suggest people buy are the jade blessings and the gold blessings uh, it'll cost you like what's that $38 a month uh, but it's well worth it and uh, also keep in mind that you're going to be spending a lot of time on this game here. You have to log in every day and do stuff. And just another tip, uh, once you start out in Season 1, you will be offered uh, the ability to buy a legendary hero for only $2. If you start out the game right now, it seems that Molly is the legendary hero on offer. When I started, it was uh, Cordelia. But in any case, you should pick this hero up because it is a legendary hero and they're going to be very hard to get as you move on in the game. So uh, take that chance. Another thing you should seriously consider is to uh, buy the third shipbuilder study. It's not very expensive and uh, it will give you another thousand emeralds as well. So I'd say it's well worth it. And this will stick with you for the whole time you play this game and it will allow you to develop your flagship much faster. I'd say it's really a requirement to keep up with your gang. So uh, next up, make sure you log in every day. I keep saying that, but make sure you do it and check the events. Uh, you know, just by doing random stuff in the game, you might actually, you know, progress an event and get some nice uh, rewards. So don't forget to check that and also understand what each event is and what it requires of you because uh, they're actually very important. All right, one of the first things you should do is to explore the map. This is so important, probably the most important thing to do. Now you can do it by quick exploring. Uh, you get 20 uh, compass every day and quick exploring uses three compass, but it gives you all the goodies uh, in one go. Uh, so it's a lot easier, uh, but you will run through your compasses a lot faster. You can also do it the old fashioned way where you simply, you know, take your ship and you sail to a port and uh, then you manually uh, explore it. Now, I would recommend that you do the manual because uh, it gives you uh, 20 ports you can uh, explore in one go instead of just six. So the way to do it is to go to the port and uh, actually physically go to the port and click the little compass icon. And uh, once you click that, uh, you choose the acquaintance button. Now, not quick explore, okay? That'll use three, so use the... Uh, the acquaintance so that will just remove the fog of war and uh, then you will have to do all the little mist incidents they're called manually and uh, that's just the way it is it takes longer but uh, you will progress much faster and uh, as soon as the first area opens up uh, into so the map it, it gets bigger uh, you will want to do this because otherwise you will never finish so uh, like I'm showing here, you'll have to do every incident manually. And uh, yeah, like I said, that's just the way it is. But uh, it doesn't really take long. And uh, you better get used to it because uh, there's a lot of busy work in this game here. So uh, if you don't like doing this, then you probably won't like uh, the rest of the stuff the game has in you know store for you. All right, you should also start to make as much gold as possible. Now, uh, in Season 1, it's not that important. Well, it is important, but uh, you won't need that much gold. But as you get to Season 2 and Season 3, your gold uh, is going to be very important. And you might as well make as much as you possibly can. So you can do that by finding treasure using your compass, for example. Uh, but as you progress in the game, uh, a better way to make gold is to auto-trade. 
and uh, to do that really you just go to a friendly port you go to the uh, trading menu and then you pick the auto trade button and uh, then you pick a port uh, it's like the further away the better you're gonna make more money but also there's a fine line to making a port too far away so it's kind of up to you how long you want to wait right so here we make 31 and then take one a little bit further away we make 38 so uh, that's how it works so if you purchase the monthly gold blessings that I showed earlier in the video, uh, you will be able to auto trade, uh, you know, more and you will make more gold. So that's also a very good reason to buy that uh, monthly uh, boost, which is really what it is. Uh, I really think you should con consider it at the very least. All right. So uh, as you raise your flagship in level, you will be able to, uh, you know, tag smaller ships onto uh, your fleet. And uh, the ships you will get in season one are uh, blue ships or, uh, you know, epic ships, so rare or epic ships. And uh, what you really want in this game is legendary ships or at the very, very least epic ships. So uh, if you have rare ships, I don't know, I don't think you should be putting a lot of effort into them because um, it does take quite a bit of gold to actually upgrade these ships. And as soon as you get to season two, you're going to get rid of them anyway. So... Uh, Sure, have them sail around with you in season one, but unless you do a lot of PvP or fighting, uh, I wouldn't really put that many resources into uh, into the rare ships, right? Epic, sure, and legendary, definitely. So uh, the same thing goes with heroes. Now, uh, of course, you're gonna have to use the rare and the epic uh, heroes at some point, but uh, again, uh, what you really want are legendary heroes. So uh, you gotta, you know, make up with yourself. Uh, are you looking at this game as a long-term prospect? Or are you just playing it for a month or so? Because if you're just playing for a few weeks and you get, you're thinking you might get tired of it, don't worry about legendary heroes. Uh, just go with rare and epic. They're much easier, and they will take you uh, probably as far as the beginning of season three. Uh, but if you, uh, you know, if you're a bit serious, you really should be aiming for those legendary heroes that you can pull uh, in the banners. All right, the last thing I just want to make sure is understood here in season one is that you have to increase your adventure level. Now, uh, I just assumed when I started the game that adventure level was like something you could just do whenever you wanted to do. But uh, you really should be keeping this uh, as high as possible and preferably uh, make sure every day that your adventure level is maxed because uh, it's super important. And uh, if you get behind, uh, the game will help you. Uh, to boost your, uh, you know, your progress, but it does take a long time. I spent most of season two trying to to catch up on what I lost out of in season one. So uh, do it every day, like everything else in this game. You have to log in every day. So the reason adventure level is so important is because that is actually the max level that you can uh, raise your heroes to. So here I'm going from uh, level ten to level eleven, and that means that my heroes can now be maxed to level eleven. And when I get to level 12 in my adventure level, I can raise my heroes to level 12. So uh, if we try to upgrade Henry Hell here, you can see we can raise him by five levels. That means he'll get to level uh, 11, just like my adventure level, but no higher than that. And uh, that's what you want. You want to raise your adventure level so you can upgrade your heroes to the highest level possible. All right, guys, I hope this video will help you get a foothold in season one and do stick with the game because season two is even better and season three is awesome. And uh, this game is just going to keep growing and uh, you will be rewarded if you stick with it. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you out there.